In this video, I am going to explain anatomy of iliacus. This is iliacus. This muscle is sometimes called iliosoas with soas. Iliosoas, iliacus and soas. These two muscles have same function for hip joint, but they have different function for core. But before I go to function of iliacus, let me explain origin and insertion. Origin of iliacus is this part. This is kind of a medial part of iliacus, inside part of body. This is iliac fossa. Iliac fossa. Fossa means concave surface. Iliacus is from concave surface of ilium, inside part of ilium. This is origin. Insertion is this part. This part is lesser trochanter. Lesser trochanter. Soas and iliacus kind of unite together around inguinal area and these muscles both attach it to lesser trochanter. That is why these two muscles have same function for hip joint because they unite together. So, let me explain function of iliacus. When iliacus contracts, that brings hip joint this way. What is it? That is flexion, hip flexion. Okay, flexion. This is very important hip flexor because there are not many hip flexors in human body. Let's say iliacus, psoas rectus femoris, and few other muscles. So when you cannot use iliacus or psoas, other hip flexors need to work more. So that can create tightness for hip joint, knee joint for many places. Okay, Adequate usage of iliacus is very, very important. Anyway, hip flexion. And lesser trochanter is a little bit deep place, posterior place, okay? So there is depth. When iliacus contracts, that brings femur this way, rotational movement, that is external rotation. External rotation. Flexion and external rotation. This is function of iliacus for hip joint. Of course, psoas can do flexion and external rotation because they fuse together. So psoas can do same thing for hip joint. Now let me talk about function for core. Iliacus and psoas can do same thing for hip joint, but they do different thing for core. Remember, psoas originates from lumbar spines. Okay, it originates from lumbar spines. Iliacus originates from pelvis. So, iliacus can bring pelvis this way, that is anterior tilt. Anterior tilt. Iliacus can move pelvis, but psoas cannot move pelvis because it does not attach to pelvis. Where does psoas originate from? Lumbar spines. That is why psoas moves lumbar spines, not a pelvis. Iliacus moves pelvis. Iliacus does not move lumbar spines. Okay, 
this differentiation is very important to understand pelvic movement and lumbar movement. Remember, these two muscles do same thing for hip joint, but they are different for core movement. This is important to remember. So this is a relationship with sores. So let me add one more tissue. That is nervous tissue. Okay, this is sores. This is iliacus. They kind of fuse together around inguinal area. What is this yellow line? This is femoral nerve. Femoral nerve. This nerve goes to anterior part of hip joint and thigh. This nerve innervates quadriceps, big thigh muscles. When sores or Iliacus gets tight. Maybe that can create impingement for femoral nerve. What happens when nervous tissue get impingement? That can create pain, numbness, or muscular dysfunction related to this nerve. That's why tightness of iliacus and sores can affect nervous tissue. This is relationship with nervous tissue. Now, let me explain kind of biomechanical perspective for hip joint and pelvis. Now, do you remember, iliacus originates from medial part of pelvis, inside part of pelvis. This is very deep muscle, so when this muscle gets tight, that can decrease stability of hip joint. You know, deep muscle is important for joint stability. Okay, this is inside. Now, there is one another important muscle which is on outside part of pelvis. This one. This is gluteus medius. Gluteus medius. When this muscle gets tight, that also can decrease stability of hip joint. This is outside. Outside. So, iliacus and gluteus medius is like an inside-outside balance. When either one gets tight, that can create dysfunction for hip stability. Of course, that can lead to pelvic stability because they both attach on pelvis and femur. That is why this balance is important for both mobility and stability. You can see for a different relationship, not only for gluteus medius. Maybe you can see this relationship between iliacus and gluteus minimus. Gluteus minimus, which is deep to gluteus medius. These two muscles are important for pelvic movement and stability, plus hip mobility and stability. Okay, this inside-outside balance is very, very important. In this video, I explained basic anatomy of iliacus, its origin, insertion, function, anatomical relationship with psoas, nervous tissue, and gluteus medius. If you liked today's video, please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. See you next video.